What's up, everybody? What's up, everyone? Welcome to Planet of the Climates. Planet of the Climates is a community organized podcast bringing you the latest information and insight into the Klima DAO ecosystem. Klima is a blockchain protocol backed by carbon credits that gives people a chance to fight climate change as a collective and get rewarded for doing so. Klima sits at the intersection of cryptocurrency, game theory, and the carbon credit market, so there's no shortage of great stuff for us to talk about. My name is Phaedrus, and I'll be your host on this adventure. I'm joined, as usual, by my great friends and co-hosts, Reg and Diamond Hands, as we discuss the latest Klima news, drop some alpha for you, and connect you with the biggest and brightest names currently exploring this space. Today, we're chatting with Mark and Darren, the two founders and co-hosts behind the mics on the successful Olympus Dow Agora podcast. I'm really looking forward to this one, so let's just jump right into it. So, Mark and Dropkick Darren are guests on this episode of the Planet of the Climates podcast. They're the dynamic duo behind the mics for the Olympus Dow's Agora podcast series, where they've had a ton of great guests and insightful conversations, not just about Olympus, but from partners across their ecosystem and DeFi at large. It's no secret they've been a bit of an inspiration for us here at Planet of the Climates too. So thank you for taking the time to join us, you two. No doubt we'll have Plenty to talk about as we learn about Agora and geek out on your experience running a podcast centered on a DAO in the DeFi. But yeah, perhaps let's start off by you telling us a little bit about who you are and how and when you discovered Ohm and perhaps maybe how the uh, seed first got planted around Agora too. Oof, that's, uh, <laughs> that's quite an intro, it's quite something to live up to. I, in terms of like stumbling across Ohm for the first time, I... Kind of, so I had come across it when I had launched and I think I was paying attention to too many different things in the space at the time because that was uh, kind of peak uh, froth. So I was kind of had my mind scattered everywhere across different things and then kind of de-risked quite a bit in early May and then I was like, I, I'm going to kind of start to research a few things that I had on my list and then kind of Olympus was, was in one of the list of things to take a look at and then long story short, the kind of crash happens in end of May, I think. And I hadn't fully gotten to Olympus, but then I kind of like, I had really seen the the chart looking absolutely disgusting. And I was like, it's time to to kind of like try and try and understand what's what they're trying to achieve here. And I, I had, I, I admit, I probably read the docs five times before I vaguely understood what was going on and what they were trying to achieve. But that's is around the time that I started to to get involved in things. And then we can, we can start to touch on how, how the Dow started the form and stuff, but I want to hear want to hear Mark's story as well. Yeah, sure. So I've been around DeFi since, I don't know, when Compound launched, <laughs> thereabouts. I used to have like a lot of Brave browser token, like Bat. I don't know if you guys know that one. I was like big on Bat. I like, I still am like one of the biggest shills for the Brave browser. But yeah, though, so I had like a bunch of bat and then like someone was tweeting, oh, you can use like bat as a collateral on compound. And I was like, oh, that's dope. <laughs> I'm going to go play around with that. So I did. And then like, yeah, I just kind of fell down. I like spent every waking hour other than like, you know, when I was working to just muck around with DeFi. And then, yeah, like DeFi summer, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, I became obsessed with, like, things that were solving, like, the money or currency problems. So I was, like, into FXS, like, right when it started. Yeah, I was in Ohm, like, in and around Ohm. I didn't get in the whitelist. I kind of got <laughs> – they kind of, like, split some whitelist positions up to, like, 30 people that were like drawn out of like a random number generator so i got kind of like a quarter or like a half of a like a little slot there and then yeah it's just kind of i thought it was a stable coin to begin with honestly i was like oh that's right so like it'll go up and down around a dollar and then like that's where you'll make profit and that's kind of, I mean, that's how like the original papers described it as well. The bonding thing was like very like super complex. So I didn't really understand it. Then 
I was like writing a newsletter for Inverse Finance. I don't know if you guys know that one. They still got the newsletter. It's called the Inverse Starship. And I think Akron is now writing it. He's very good too. He's doing a lot of work with Concave. And then I was like, oh, Olympus is dope and needs a newsletter. And then kind of, <laughs> there's like a post I made. I was like, this is the newsletter. We should do it. And then Wartel was like, why don't we like make it a DAO project? And I was like, all right. And then we had to like, you know, <laughs> negotiate for like, I don't know. I think our budget was like $200 a week or something. Yeah. <laughs> I actually remember that initial kind of group because there was like a little formation within the DAO, a few people that were like interested in helping out. And then we had that private group and then it kind of got to like the max in there and then we had to kind of like spin up some kind of official channel. But yeah, that, those uh, those times were uh, were, were quite, quite, quite the ride because I remember our first... I remember we when we even... If we're going to kind of take it to the podcast, I remember our first... You, you kind of did like a... You love Agora Aloud. I love Agora Aloud. I want to bring it back in some way. <laughs> no way. What, what is Agora Aloud then? I mean, you can correct me, Mark, but it's, uh, I recall it being a SoundCloud link to Mark just reading out the newsletter. I think that's what, oh, what it was. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, verbatim. It was like an audio, audio, right. book, audio book of the newsletter? Or? <laughs> it was essentially, right? Like, anyway, it was pretty dumb because people like want to hear conversations about things they don't want to hear sort of regurgitating something that you can read i guess we need to go back also to this concept of you guys having a budget i mean fader should we look into that too or you need a budget That's, yeah like <laughs> yeah, how come they never told us you, get, <laughs> you guys so getting paid for this <laughs> 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 but just to, like obviously like the newsletter was central kind of your first product out the door there and not to just you know focus on you as people but what were you bringing to the table like were you writers or you're uh, in media or journalism or had you done podcasts before like what was this like were you diving in the deep end or drop I don't know his background other than he's a soccer player. He played soccer all around the world. Uh, I mean, if we're going that far, if we're going that far back, I used to <laughs> um, play professional sport for six years, and then I had kind of uh, towards the end of that, I started to basically make music on the side. But then that ended up turning into a pseudo. It was like kind of like an avatar based producer so i was like kind of creating like a music brand you know via soundcloud and started to kind of connect with people in the industry he's never shown us any of this nobody's seen it it could be styles. could be um but yeah so i started kind of creating that and so that was like kind of my i guess i was running a myself without really even knowing it and then so i guess the way that i started to get involved in agora specifically is more like on the on the kind of growth and like iteration side of things. Whereas like Mark is very much the fundamentalist when it comes to the newsletter. Whereas like, I feel like I kind of offer more of that. Let's try new things side of side of it. Yeah. So any plans to uh, perhaps bootstrap the purchase of a, a premiership team for Olympus, put that in the treasury, maybe partner with <laughs> Peter McCormick or. <laughs> We're talking to Kraus Dow for the incubator actually. Who are these guys? It's a lot of the guys from Redacted, and they're trying to like buy a basketball team in the US. <laughs> oh, so wow. it's a very cool project. Um, and they're like pretty good. At I think teams. they're trying to buy the Pelicans. Oh, New Orleans, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that's their first acquisition. Is that Alpha? No, no. I think that's, that's, no, no. I don't think that's Alpha. <laughs> that's like straight up, I think, public knowledge. I hope. I hope. Yeah, it makes so much sense, though, you know, especially for a team that's been perhaps struggling for a while. Like, I would love for the Toronto Maple Leafs to get purchased by a huge community yeah. and everyone kind of, yeah. yeah, exactly. And just everyone can kind of vote on uh, decisions and whatnot. It'd be so cool. I wanted to switch gears to 3-3. So this is a topic that we were kind of discussing today. And, you know, with the price action, I was trying to make the passionate point that 3-3 doesn't work when the community grows large enough. In my mind, it makes sense in the early days of Olympus when you're trying to form this core group of passionate community members and, and have them understand this underlying protocol, very complex protocol, and distill it down to like two numbers, right? And it, it is a very powerful meme. 
I guess I had two questions. One, do you think that it scales? And two, do you think that the meme itself has changed at all for like better or worse over the last year? I think, well, I guess it does scale, right? But you have to find the bottom. So I don't agree that 3.3 is stake and hold. Like 3.3 is more about culture of cooperation, like win and help win. Like it's it's very much a, you can buy and hold your own, but like being 3.3 is like being aligned and sort of decentralized and cooperating. But I think like with the price action, what happens is you'll keep selling <laughs> until the people who refuse to sell are the majority of the owners, right? So wherever that bottom is, hopefully it's above backing. Otherwise, it like, causes some other problems. But thankfully, Ohms has kind of appears to have settled like slightly above backing, like maybe 10 or 15% above backing. And then what's happening now is, well, you've just run out of sellers. The people who uh, have it now are not interested in selling it. So you have this kind of very sound base. Now, you know, new players who aren't, who don't want to, like, don't think that they're creating the reserve currency of DeFi and they're like, I just want passive income that's all i want right like if you have a lot of those people then they're going to sell right because they're not interested in building a reserve currency so eventually you get to this place where the core community are the ones who now own the majority of it and then after that happens they'll keep growing their sort of holdings of it and then and then since no one's selling, <laughs> but the supply is expanding through like bonds and stuff, then you're going to see a sort of price appreciation again, right? Because new people will become interested in it and want to buy it. And then the only way to buy it is to either like bond in or like buy off the market. So I think like the message for Ohm is a bit easier than Klima. I think Klima is a really tough message because you guys are like we're going to buy up the like floor and then and then carbon's going to be worth like more money and that's actually like as everyone can see it's pretty hard to do right and then like i don't think like toucan's behavior has been particularly helpful recently um but yeah i'm not sure if <laughs> we want to get into that yeah, no, we can certainly get into anything. I mean, the, the interesting, so looking as uh, sort of a third party, but sort of privy to some of the internal discussions with Toucan, it um, it seems like both parties think they're correct. And just the execution was perhaps a little bit disjointed and communication wasn't there. But I, I think from the bigger standpoint, everybody's trying to accomplish the same goal, of bringing the carbon market on chain. And there's going to be growing pains. And disputes like this. I, I view this as a very small event, even though it feels very big right now. And it'll be like nothing in a year. But certainly it's something to work through and and really pay attention to closely right now. And that's what I think both sides have been doing to move on and grow stronger. That's the impression I have. I think you're right though. I mean this is not a stable coin that's backing Klima. It has a whole different dynamic that's tied into traditional markets. So it's very tricky. I mean Brian said it best we're you know we're trying to create a currency like ohm but it's a currency backed by carbon and not, it's not an asset necessarily. And a uh, currency has a different dynamic. It has a much bigger upside too, just like Ohm has a much bigger upside than uh, just trying to build something backed by an asset. So it's very, very interesting. Now that we're sort of a little bit further along, I think back in September, there were many forks exploring different things, much, you know, obviously of different quality levels and management levels. And uh, so we've had the opportunity now to see some different outcomes, right? Uh, based on different inputs and market conditions and community types and everything. And so did anything stand out in particular in terms of like learning experiences for Olympus or even Klima in terms of the, uh, the forks uh, in your mind? I'm sure Mark has some opinions, but I think the first thing that comes to mind, because Olympus is the core infrastructure and there's been hundreds, almost thousands of forks that have kind of taken that infrastructure, then it's like this weird dilution of the initial infrastructure that has been kind of like eroded so it's like because of the forks are scammy because the forks have bad management because you know the, the forks have kind of incom like incompetencies 
then it's like Olympus, this must be your fault. So it's like kind of all come back the image and brand of Olympus, which like ultimately has like indirectly affected us, not that we could do anything about that, right? That's interesting though too, because you know, you talked about earlier on, obviously like Olympus has been through you know, a down cycle before too, whereas all the forks, you know, uh, Klima included, this is kind of our first ride towards, again, what we hope is that bottom, though you have that experience with Olympus of seeing seeing the other side of the tunnel or the other end of it there. Yeah, I mean, the price action is not really, I think, anything on the existing community's mind. I think like Mark has kind of touched, I think a lot of people that are, that remain in Ohm are those who take the long-term thesis that what is being built here is kind of like, essential infrastructure for the you know DeFi ecosystem so i think it's more so like a you're like measuring kind of community activity dao activity dao execution and i think those kind of things are in kind of like the the expansion of the the economy i think that is kind of like the 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 things that i pay attention to in terms of like whether whether ohm is performing you know or not i think like clean has got a strong community but it's really the problem I think for Klima is that it, in, it it had all these non-DeFi natives, right? Like all these kind of TradFi people and like finance types and sort of people who weren't really interested in crypto, but are interested in carbon. They are interested in like something that, you know, probably makes them feel good and like they're solving a problem, but then they start to see sort of their money start to go down so they're just going to exit whereas like olympus like really built out like this very strong base of people who are like we will not sell (laughs) tokens no matter what like so i think for klima it didn't really have a chance to kind of um do enough education with the community because it's like upside didn't last long enough and it was always going to be hard because people were like, hold on, this is backed by carbon. Like, it's not, it doesn't have any real value, right? Like, it, it, and and then you're like such big players in that market itself that it's kind of very difficult to communicate like what the, what the, what the purpose is and like what the agenda is. And like, you see people posting about it on Twitter and stuff and it's like, well, you know, you you own this cleaner, but you don't know what the what the plan is. Um, so, but that's really hard. I think like it's kind of you know at least you know hopefully, <laughs> um, you know bottoming out here, and then at the bottom it's just the people who believe in the project are left, right? So, um, you can then start climbing back up. And I mean, it's the same with Bitcoin, right? Like Bitcoin. <laughs> went down like 99 percent or something like in the early days and then it, it it's the same sort of reliance except for bitcoin didn't have anything backing it right so when you're like trying to create like a new asset type um that's like the experience that you have to kind of deal with and then eventually over time you get higher highs and <laughs> because the the people who believe in the project are slowly becoming bigger and bigger like percentage of the holders right yeah i view this as a a big turning point right now this is where it's almost like a consolidation if you will in terms of what you're saying i mean not just the ta on the price but much as that works on a rebase token but on the uh, on the community itself consolidating around the people that are essentially never sellers of as as i am I think that's important. Yeah, and I and it's an interesting thing. It's a nice tour de force of Klimafud as well. So we appreciate that. <laughs> and um, yeah, let's turn it over to Diamond Hands. So a lot of people have been saying that Klima is actually an Olympus fork on hard mode. And because the thing is that we're building a foundation that doesn't exist now. When we first started out, it was a, a foundation that didn't exist. So a lot of people, I think, couldn't really just ape in because of high APY. It's a new token and not having the enough uh, education. And I do agree that, you know, right now, this is the best time for us to build back up, you know, by educating the the community itself, you know, getting all the information. In fact, like carbon markets, is not something that it's easily understood compared to, even if someone is very well versed in the Olympus tokenomics, they're coming into um, 
Klima itself, you have to learn a different set of knowledge when it comes to the carbon market. So that's something that it's a steep curve you have to climb. And speaking of that, and this is the part where I feel that, you know, the role of a podcast is very important, you know, in the community building that helps to identify challenges and, you know, and becomes the motivation of investors here, you know. I'm just curious, like, what do you think yeah, the role of a co- podcast does in the community building part of things? I think it depends on, so I think for Agora's case, I think we're very much focus was to create a independent source of information that isn't coming out of the DAO channel specifically. So it's like kind of complementary to what's coming out of marketing and what is kind of being built at the bottom of the community stack within the Discord, for example. So, but then I think there's, it, it differs if it's like a, you know, something that you use in conjunction with, like if it's a marketing specific podcast, then that becomes like a different item. But if you're building like an independent media arm that kind of like helps complement everything that goes on in the DAO, then I think that is how I would visualize and describe what Agora is doing. You know, there's something that's very much like, you know, um, affirms and, and kind of like validates and makes sure that the Olympus narrative is is, is kind of concise and, and like on track with what the, all the OMIs are kind of are thinking and looking for. And then, you know, um, as opposed to something that's like, you know, integrated into marketing and is very much like a, you know, very, very like, you know, Dow out of out the main kind of Dow funnel uh, scenario. Yeah, I mean, I agree. So I think like for us, the bottom of the stack really for like if you think of community media as a stack, the bottom is the newsletter, right? So the newsletter like sets the agenda for like what's going on and creates the narrative. So like there's like deliberate decisions about things you're going to report on and things you're not going to report on. And then sort of what, like kind of what the narrative is around that. So being a kind of independent community media, you get to say things that you couldn't say as the DAO, right? Like what the editorial opinion is of something that like congratulating people if the DAO says congratulations to the DAO, it it just it's it doesn't make any sense, right? So then you build on top of that and then you have like our podcast, like the news of the week, like we have, which is a conversation about what that news is and why it's important and kind of you get a bit more detail around that. And then the podcast is really good because you get to highlight like whatever you think is important at the time so mostly so we started off exclusively with guests from olympus and it's a really a gr- binding your community to the project so like if you come on a podcast and you're like <laughs> you know one of the team members of the project or like you know you're working on policy or something and then you go on the podcast and you talk about that you're like bound to the project a bit closer then, right? Because you've taken on, you know, an opportunity to publicly represent sort of what what the project's doing and in a very public way, you know, committed to the project. So, and that's like in the newsletter, we have like, you know, Omi of the week. Like if the DAO is picking Omi of the week, then it's like not, it does, it's less meaningful than a sort of like independent community sort of run shop. And then like Omi profiles is something we have. So if you are like profiled in the newsletter as someone in the community that also like binds you to the community, right? And you think about the ways in which, you know, you are part of the community and why it's important to you. And then like when you're in a downturn, these are the people who are still sticking around, right? The people who, you know, take time to be a part of the project and represent it and like have thought about the reasons why they want to be part of the project. And then we have like a couple of other things like the insights. So like numbers. So like that's just for people who are like (laughs) interested in that type of thing. And then like some like cultural events and stuff, which we've been working on. Like we had the yearbook last week, I think. And like that was just sort of all the people in the DAO and like a couple of the OG OMIs and stuff 
Yeah. So, and I mean, like having that publicly facing, it not only like is a strong signal to DeFi, like, look, here are all the people involved in building this sort of community and this product and this ecosystem. And then the people in it, like, feel very well disposed to the project as well, because the project's like, you know, kind of highlighted them as like key members. Yeah, I think that's that's brilliant. I've uh, just I don't know about you know Diamond Hands or Reggie, but I've certainly thought about it more as the former, but less as the latter. But I think you're pointing out a really an important aspect there too that you know there's that ability to build that community from within your your guests as well there too, and not just outward reaching, but yeah, fortifying from within. That's a good point. Yeah, I think in in our case so far we've been juggling both. I think that would be fair to say, right? Like trying to bring in uh, outside and inside. Yeah, I think one, one of the things that what I love more about Agora is that it really gives you insight of the core team members of Olympus and you get them to know more beyond Discord, beyond their messages and, you know, have an insight of their life and what their thought process like, you know, like a deep dive into their brains, their minds, their thought processes. And I think that was something that I really love about Agora. I think based on what you guys have shared with me, it's like, it's really very internal. It's just like giving the Omis itself a peek under the hood, what makes Olympus work. Uh, you know, who are the ones behind the scenes working hard, you know, and, and letting them have an opportunity to let the community learn about them and build the community from inside out. That's why I'm understanding. Yeah. It's like, a really strong signal in itself as well that someone's taking the time to interview these people or like write about them and that builds like confidence in the community oh we've got <laughs> we've got this bunch of people who go around and sort of interview our members because our members are important enough to be interviewed like it's kind of self-fulfilling in a little bit of a way as well so uh, I just want to note that, you know, we do share a producer in uh, Don Miju and just want to give you guys a big, a little bit of a congrats too. I believe you're 60 episodes under your belt so far right now. Is that right? Yeah, I think we're, we're, we're definitely, I think with the, with the addition of kind of like a season two, I think because of started new numbers, but yeah, I think you're right where if you include the bonus episodes as well, we're very, very uh, definitely beyond um, half a century so we're on our way to 100 <laughs> which is exciting yeah number number goes up yeah number does go up in terms of content that is that's that's what agora is about <laughs> yeah we had no podcast experience whatsoever <laughs> prior to launching this wow. yeah i think i think pr prior to like i think don has been such a saving grace in terms of like allowing me to pursue some other things like in terms of like facilitating you know new, new things and, and kind of like trying to push some more things on the strategy front but I think prior to Don I was kind of relying on a lot of my past kind of producer uh, as in like music producing background but if, if Don didn't come in I think I would have definitely started to get a bit burnt out in that sense trying to like workshop trying to like edit and clean up everything it's definitely I uh, my hats go go off to, to Don every time he, he kind of pushes out the the quality content yeah that's a ton of work producing podcasts and yeah big thanks to don and hats off to you guys for hitting that uh, 60 episode mark there too i think you know here for planet the climates we've definitely you know looked up to you guys and you know copied a few ideas along the way too i think our launch episode was with us who i believe was your launch episode as well is that not right yeah that's right we had the news and the <laughs> we had you and me doing yeah, the yeah, news yeah. and then we like stayed on the podcast and it was like this hour and 45 minute monstrosity which was like both the news and an interview with us <laughs> <laughs> it was and i'm pretty sure it was like kind of there was like pops in the recording that i couldn't remove it was just like all over the place but it was lovely and i love the fact that that will always be catalogued for people to kind of go back and have a look at because I think kind of going back and seeing how things progress and, and how we've kind of like worked on things out in the open is how like, you know, progression should be like showcased or highlighted is like, you know, no one ever is perfect. So I think you need to kind of just like start something and then from there you, you know, through kind of like sheer effort and will, you can figure out how to how to do something. 
Yeah, I think that's been our, our mindset as well, to iterating and just tweaking and improving as we're hitting the ground running here too. But yeah, my, my question there for you with your 50, 60 episodes under your belt is beyond that first one with Usfi there. Do you have a favorite interview perhaps that's stuck with you? I found Apollo is quite interesting considering Apollo was kind of around during the Web 1 times and was like, kind of talking about you know, what, what things were like back then and, and just how like kind of cycles of innovation happen. And it was like, obviously, again, like you were talking about Diamond Hands, you know, we, we try and give that, you know, the community insight into like elusive core team members at, at times, at least from the community side of things, they think that you can't really get any, there's no access points to those core team at times. So it's like giving the community that point of contact so they can feel more connected to the people that are, you know, trying to run their economies. So I really liked the one with the Klima crew. I had no idea. I was like, oh, okay, this makes a lot more sense. Because <laughs> it was like the first time they did one with Bankless and it was like, I was like, I still don't know what this is. And then they did one with us and we kind of went through like how a credit got on chain and then where it went and sort of what the idea was for like, soaking up all the like low value carbon and like keeping it stored away to increase the like price of the rest of the carbon on the market like that was a really cool one that really opened my eyes as well oh excellent yeah definitely love to hear that i'm gonna have to listen to that one so i can understand it as well <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah what's going on there so I, I want to bring on towards the end of our podcast session i would like to bring us our uh, signature question we ask all guests which is this question called 2033 so in 11 years time what do you think is the long-term vision you have and how do you see agora making an impact in the olympus uh, community and beyond yeah i could see agora becoming like i think it's like it's not necessarily uh, agora might exist forever at least under like the you know maybe mark and i's management but maybe someone else can take it on and work on kind of like being that independent voice for the, you know, the economy, for example. But I think if we're thinking a long time horizon, I think it's used to kind of verify and consolidate community. And I think at some point it may not need to become something that ver verifies and kind of like, you know, affirms things that are going on in the, you know, community that might just simply be done by, you know, independent medias across DeFi, right? It, whereas I kind of see Agora being this like really important piece to like a, you know, maybe like more of a bootstrapping phase in terms of like community consolidation. And then at some point it, we might get to some kind of uh, inflection point where it's like maybe no longer needed or kind of like you kind of deprecated in the community. Yeah, I think if I'm successful, it won't need Agora, right? So 11 years is a long time away. 11 years, I um, will probably be the decentralized currency of the world. And it'll be in like all projects, treasuries, all like, I mean, DAOs will probably become the new corporations and everyone will keep their savings in home. And then like, I mean, you don't like if everybody already has it, then you don't need like newsletter or podcast or anything like these i expect we'll roll out to be like a sub dow and we'll get like a grant with some funding and then we'll just go off and sort of like expand right and like talk more about the economy and like projects that are like you know building on top of ohm or are related to ohm or ohm owns some of their equity and then slowly it becomes you know DeFi goodwill media arm that highlights projects that are using ohm but eventually like ohm becomes ubiquitous and there's you're not sort of identified by holding ohm because everybody has it and you don't really need agora then so hopefully we'll be obsolete is my grand scheme i think that's a brilliant perspective answer there to appreciate that where the podcast fits and where the you know the newsletter and your media vision fits in the developmental scheme and plan in the future for Olympus. And we certainly do hope it succeeds to the, to the vision that's out there. I think just to, to wrap things up here too, maybe a little bit of a question reflecting an earlier question back to us on Planet of the Climates here. Do you have any advice for us, you know, given that you're sage and you've got your 60 episodes under your belt there, um, advice for us in terms of our next steps on the podcast or uh, a guest that you think would be just brilliant for us to feature, whether it's low-hanging fruit or a stretch goal? Or 
I think if if I was going to give any advice, that that sounds funny. I don't know what it, what what's useful in in my advice, but I think people inherently want to see people make mistakes. Like I think, as in in a in like an open and kind of like you know humble sense. Like it's like I think by by kind of doing things out in the open, I think is like one of the most important and like effective ways of like especially interacting digitally. And I think like trying to be as like human as possible, you know, behind the avatars, I think is like a really undervalued thing when we're kind of pushing community or content in the space. So I think that would be my two cents is to kind of like remember that we're all human behind the avatars and try to like, you know, be that yourself and also like think of the guests in that light or like anyone that you're doing content with. Yeah, that that definitely hits home or I think it's something that resonates with us in terms of yeah, being authentic or expressing our, our personalities too. We've just gone through a little bit of a, a rebrand, I guess, with our, our marketing team helping us out and we've got our little climate avatars. So we're kind of expressing our personality through there. And yeah, hopefully we can continue to do that through the the conversations that we have as well too. Yeah, I think having a script can be like a little bit disjointed. Like the most interesting things people say are like, you know, the things that aren't sort of going to come from a scripted answer and just like being able to be curious on the podcast and sort of explore areas that like, you know, other people wouldn't have necessarily investigated or like, yeah, like a kind of any shared experience you've had with the guest or um, people just want to listen to nice conversations. They don't really care what's said. (laughs) Like people just want to hang out with like, like-minded friends so if you provide that then people will just look forward to like a episode where it's not like scripted it's like friends chatting to each other so we try and have guests that we have like some connection to because it really lends itself to that so you can kind of tell where there's no prior relationship or it's like a bit tenuous when you listen to the episode and those are generally our worst episodes in terms of like being uninteresting or like something you wouldn't want people to listen to um or people wouldn't want to listen to um so yeah that's what we try and do just make it super chill i think like the one with scoopy we were just jamming about like you know what the, what the fuck's happening with mim or <laughs> like their like leverage strategies or whatever like that's that's really fun and interesting to hear his opinion about that right like we, and you wouldn't be able to set that question up like what do you reckon about this other random protocol like it just kind of arises emergent from the conversation I actually picked up on one thing you mentioned earlier of affirming things that are occurring in your community or affirming community members or verifying community members i think that's a very interesting concept of uh, interviewing people and that's kind of the idea we had with the arc of kind of interviewing the core members who are behind the pseudo anonymous persona and allowing people to really kind of listen to a conversation with them for an hour to get to know them uh, without seeing what they look like without knowing their name or their background or what school they went to and i think that's really powerful to build trust with the community and and really kind of understand the differing point of views uh of the people that are not necessarily in charge of the protocol, but the ones who were kind of the original members, original founding members. So I think, uh, I think that's a really interesting point you made. I would actually think it's more important. Like the first people we interviewed were definitely not core members. They were like sort of community members who were the people who were committing to contribute to the project who aren't sort of aligned with like, you know, a a founder's share or whatever are the most important people to the project, right? And if they don't feel like they belong in in the project and that they're sort of an important part and like it's, it's a signal, like you're important enough to be on the podcast that people want to hear about you is like really like kind of, it can be that real strong foundation for like building out the community, right? These community contributors who've come on board. Well, yeah, excellent. Yeah, Reg or Diamond Hands, any other thoughts or reflections there too? But I think that's, yeah, really, really appreciate that advice and look up to your show, definitely. I just want to say thank you guys for taking the time. I really appreciate it. It's been a wonderful time getting to know you guys. No pleasure. We, yeah, it's lovely to, to chat to some fellow 
media folks. It's also just nice to kind of see that like, you know, people also like starting to realize that this like, you know, independent source of media to like complement all things going on in the DAO is just like a really, you know, strong kind of marketing tool to kind of, you know, like I said, complement everything. Excellent. Definitely a little bit uh, self-serving for us, but we just love having that chat with you and be able to look over your shoulder and uh, yeah, learn from your experience there too. Definitely. This has been a, a really eye-opening experience for you guys to really hear. Like Agora was one of the reasons why I invested in uh, Olympus itself. And today to have my own show, you know, with buddies like Fidris and Reg, and right now, you know, talking to the in my opinion, the OG, it's really an amazing experience for me. Thank you. That's very kind. <laughs> yeah, that is very kind. Yeah, I just want to thank you guys for having us on and, and like, you know, thinking of us in that light. I think that's very kind of you. Feel free. I will have my DMs open so you can always message me regarding anything. I am uh, feel like I'm a pretty approachable person. So if anyone ever wants to talk or jam on stuff, I'm always open to, to communicate in any form. Yeah. And our Twitter handle is at Olympus Agora, uh, and my handle is at Mark11ETH. I don't really post that much on Twitter. I just retweet things mostly. <laughs> Drop, on the other hand, he's a real Twitter, Twitter roar. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I think I just, I think it's just tricky. You don't want to be too much of an, uh, an engagement farmer, but you want to kind of keep the, the drum beat going. But I think maybe when we hit a hundred episodes, we can do a check in with uh, Klima. We can get one of uh, we can get some of you guys on on that and do like a big joint. We can have a round table. Get redacted guys in here. Yeah, a round table. Yeah. yeah, all the podcasters. Podcast battle royale coming up next. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you guys for being here. Really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Hey. Right. Uh, wow, what a great conversation. Definitely a little uh, podcast inside baseball conversation going on there too at the end. But uh, I thought it was so great to meet uh, Mark and Dropkick Darren and learn more about the backstory of Agora. The two of them provided uh, for me what I felt was a great story about the formation of Agora. And what resonated the most was perhaps, you know, the role that the podcast or their you know, Agora media arm, I guess, with the newsletter too, the role that it plays in the ecosystem. And something that I hadn't really thought of before too, is that kind of, you know, reinforcing the community from within. I mean, I always think of POTK as being a community, you know, oriented platform, but strengthening it from within with the guests that are on the show too. Uh, Reg or Diamond Hands, uh, do you have a key takeaway that resonated with you? Yeah, I think that works really well for Olympus and Agora. And I thought that was very interesting too, just the way they kind of were more, a little bit more focused on the internal community and reinforcing it and recognizing people that are uh, they view as having a positive impact on the community. And I think that's definitely something that we can do as well. But I feel that we also have in, in Plan of the Climates a, a kind of submission of also educating our community about climate change and the carbon markets. And so we're also kind of reaching out and um, in, in doing so, reaching out to people, perhaps non-crypto native uh, guests, is we may also be introducing new groups of people to crypto and Klima. So I think I think in our case, we could maybe do both uh, and continue to do both, uh, but it was interesting to hear uh, their folks. And I think that works really well for them. Yeah, definitely. Diamond hands, what, what stuck with you? I think it's very interesting to see how Akura is. Like I never knew what was the intended role of Agora in the Olympus ecosystem. I always like, one of the earlier days when I first invested in uh, Olympus, right, was through listening to Agora to understand the core members, what's their top process, have a bit more insight. And you know, re really hearing this value of reinforcing community from within, it really resonates with me. And maybe subtly that was what, uh, you know, we, build we have been building in plan of the climate and uh, at the same time you know really giving you know the insights of the partners we bring in and you know hearing the hearing their thoughts is really really important and uh, i think that's something that has been the reason why we have been doing very well in the podcast scene as of now and uh, i'm very very happy you know to really have this conversation with the ogs in my opinion 
Yeah, well, I know we're definitely, you know, standing on the shoulders of the giants at Agora there with our podcast. And I think, yeah, pretty cool to have them as a, a milestone conversation with our 10th episode out the door here, I think, too. And yes, uh, Mark and Darren, if you're listening, we would love to have that chat again when you hit your 100 episode milestone. Love to follow your journey and uh, reconnect again sometime soon. Hope you enjoyed that conversation, too. And for everything Klima, make sure that you're hitting up klimadao.finance, uh, where you can stake, bond, and I think most importantly, find the link to the Klima Discord community. As you're hopefully well aware, we are a decentralized, autonomous organization. Uh, so Klima is a community driven, just like this very podcast. Join us and you'll find a great group of climates and plenty of opportunities to contribute and be an active climate too. We hope you enjoyed this conversation and we really look forward to saying hello once again on the next Planet of the Climates.